Income tax 2022-2023. Credits for qualifying children and other dependents. General instructions. Let's do some wealth preservation with some tax preparation. Most of this information comes from instructions for Schedule 8812, credits for qualifying children and other dependents, tax year 2022, you can find on the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Looking at the income tax formula, we're down at the bottom where the credits are located. Remembering, the first half of the income tax formula is in essence an income statement, although a strange one. The bottom of it resulting in taxable income, similar to net income for an income statement. We use that to calculate the tax before credits or other taxes, not by multiplying by one rate, but by using the progressive tax system. And then we have to deal with the credits and other taxes, like self-employment tax, and the payments that we have made either through withholdings or estimated tax payments to get to the tax refund or tax due bottom line. Remember, the credits are similar to deductions in that we like them both. However, if we could choose between $1 of credit and $1 of deduction, we typically want the $1 of credit because we get the full benefit for the $1 of credit, whereas a $1 deduction would simply be reducing the taxable income by that dollar and the benefit would be dependent on our tax rate. Remember that in terms of the Form 1040, we're looking at page two of the Form 1040. Page one deals with the basic weird income statement of the income tax formula to get to the taxable income. Page two deals with the credits and the payments where we might have many credits, including this one, a refundable portion and a non-refundable portion. So support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. We have one kind of credit category that's now basically being, being broken out into two places on the tax return because of this concept of it being refundable and part of it being non-refundable. The non-refundable part means that it can't take the tax liability below zero. If it does, you st you'll basically lose the credit for anything that goes past that point. The refundable portion giving you a benefit even if the uh, tax liability goes below zero. All right, general instructions, taxpayer identification number requirements. You must have a TIN by the due date of your return. So if you or your spouse is filing jointly, uh, do not have an SSN, social security number or ITIN issued on or before the due date of your 2022 return, including extensions. You cannot claim the CTC child tax credit, ODC, other dependent credit or ACTC additional child tax credit on either your original or amended 2022 return if you apply for an i-10 on or before the due date of your 2022 return including extensions and the irs issued you an i-10 as a result of the application the irs will consider your i-10 as issued on or before the due date of your return quite considerate of them so how much is the 2022 child tax credit so for uh, the 2022 tax year, the CTC child tax credit is worth $2,000 per qualifying dependent child. If your modified adjusted gross income is $400,000 or below married filing jointly or $200,000 or below all other filers. If you're MAGI, remember when we think about these phase outs, it usually starts with the AGI, which is your adjusted gross income. The M is the modified adjusted gross income. So if your MAGI exceeds those limits, your credit amount will be reduced 
by $50 for each 1,000 of income exceeding the threshold until it is eliminated. So when you're discussing the child tax credit with people, you can basically give the general concepts $2,000. It changed substantially in 2021. It's basically reverting back to its original format after the crisis and whatever the reason was for the adjustment in 2022. And then there's going to be an income uh, limit uh, that's fairly, it's a fairly high income limit. And then oftentimes you'll be able to say, look, it phases out once you get past that limit and you probably don't need to actually know exactly what the phase out is in your mind possibly depending on the software to do that because your job might be to discuss this visualize this plan for this and so on so that you can you can talk to people and make projections and then when you get down to the nitty-gritty of doing the actual phase out you can have the software help you out with that process so there is that so the ctc is also per uh, partially refundable tax credit that is uh, it can reduce your tax bill on a dollar for dollar basis and you might be able to apply for a tax refund of up to $1,500 for anything left over so in other words the refundable portion and the non-refundable portion the non-refundable portion means most credits the concept is this is a tax so we're talking about federal income taxes so it shouldn't be the case, you would think, for a credit to result in the liability going below zero and you still getting money from the credit when you don't owe any taxes, right? That would be, so that wouldn't be a tax. But we can use the tax code as like a benefit program and not just for taxes, which is in essence what's being done with the refundable portion of the credit, allowing people still to get a quote refund end quote which isn't really a refund it's a benefit program at that point because it's not really taxes because you're getting a refund on on the refundable part and that's why it gets a little bit messy on the second page of the tax return because now we've got to think about well how are we going to do that logistically calculating the, the non-refundable portion that can't takes the liability below zero and then the refundable portion which can the refundable portion acting kind of like a payment in essence like like it, it meaning you're going to get a dollar for dollar benefit uh generally from it even if your tax liability goes to zero or past zero so this partial refund portion is called the additional child tax credit by the irs that's why we have these two terms so when you normally talk to people you say yeah it's the ctc it's the child tax credit 2000 whatever and then when you get into the refundable portion you sh most people probably still say ctc child tax credit but the additional child tax credit is what's being referred to when we get to this to this refundable portion that you're breaking out in these two categories okay each qualifying child must use the ctc or actc child tax credit additional child tax credit must have the required social security number so if you have a qualifying child who does not have a, a required ssn social security number you cannot use the child to claim the ctc child tax credit or additional child tax credit on either your original or amended 2022 return, the required SSN social security number is one that is valid for employment and is issued before the due date of your 2022 return, including extensions. If your qualifying child was born and died in 2022 and you do not have an SSN for the child, attach a copy of the child's birth certificate, death certificate, or hospital records, the document must show the child was born alive. So each dependent you use for the ODC, other dependent credit, must, must have a TIN by the due date of your return. So when we think about the credits that are going to be taken here, generally the thought process would be, could you get the child tax credit? If you cannot get the child tax credit, could you get the other dependent credit? And this is where it kind of ties into the idea of a dependent Normally, of course, when you're thinking about a dependent, someone that you're going to put on your return as a dependent, you are getting a benefit from that. Primarily, the first thing that comes to mind would be the child tax credit if they qualify for the child tax credit. But if they don't qualify for the child tax credit, then you may be able to get the other dependent credit. And therefore, these two credits are kind of are kind of linked together because they're basically attached to uh, someone who might qualify as a dependent. So we have a similar kind of requirement. You got to have the TIN by the due date of the return for the other dependent credits. 
So if you have a dependent who does not have an SSN, social security number, I-10, or A-10, issued on or before the due date of your 2022 return, including extensions, you cannot use that dependent to claim the ODC on either your original or amended 2022 return. If you apply for an I-10 or A-10 for the dependent on or before the due date of your 2022 return, including extensions, and the IRS issues an I-10 or A-10 as a result of the application, the IRS will consider the I-10 or A-10 as issued on or before the due date of your return. Form 8862 may be required. So if your CTC, child tax credit, refundable or non-refundable, depending on the tax year, ACTC, additional child credit, or ODC, other dependent credit, for a year after 2015 was denied or reduced for any reason other than a math or clerical error, you must attach Form 8862 to your tax return to claim the CTC child tax credit, ACTC other child tax credit, or the ODC other dependent credit unless an exception applies. So you can see Form 8862 information to claim certain credits after disallowance and its instructions for more information, including whether an uh, exemption applies. So effect of credit on welfare benefits. This is always kind of an issue when you deal with these kind of, of programs where you're gonna get something that kind of looks like income or you have multiple different kind of welfare programs. Then the question is, well, if I have income from this other source, is that gonna mess up the my other kind of income sources that I have set up? And note, this is obviously one of the problems with uh, the, the benefit or welfare kind of programs or incentive programs. Oftentimes, they actually incentivize people to, to not uh, be able to work or not to go into work because if they were to get some income, they would lose a lot of benefits. They might lose more benefits than the income that could actually be made. One of the ideas to kind of combat that was the earned income tax credit where you actually have to have some uh, earn income, the idea being that it would incentivize people to be to be to get some earned income and get back in into the workforce. But many of the credits and whatnot are not set up, you know, ideally. So you have these kind of issues uh, with one system having an effect on another benefit program and so on. So that's what we have here. Any refund you received as a result of taking the ACTC additional child tax credit cannot be counted as income when determining you or anyone else is eligible for benefits or assistance or how much you or anyone else can receive under any federal program or under any state or local program finance in whole or in part with federal funds. So typically, that's usually a good thing for the people that might be getting funds from these other benefit programs, which you would think would have a limit depending on your income level. And therefore you would like to like reporting taxes. You would like to have the actual income, but it be exempt from having to be reported because having income would be bad for most of these tax taxes and these welfare kind of program systems to be able to participate in them. So these programs include temporary assistance for needy families. That's the TANF. Medicaid, Supplemental Security Income, SSI, and Supplemental Nutrition Assistant Program, formerly food stamps. In addition, when determining eligibility, the refund cannot be counted as a res resource for at least 12 months after you receive it. Uh, check with your local benefit coordinator to find out if your refund will affect your benefits. Okay, so then we got credits for qualifying children. The CTC additional child tax credit and AC, I'm sorry, the CTC child tax credit and ACTC additional child tax credit uh, are credits for individuals who claim a child as a dependent if the child meets certain conditions. So again, the general idea here, we have a dependent. The question is what's gonna be the benefit from taxes of the dependent? Usually the child tax credit would be the biggest benefit. If not, then we move on to the other dependent credit. Okay, so to claim a child for the CTC and ACTC, the child must be your dependent under age 17 at the end of 2022 and meet all the conditions in step one through three who qualifies as your dependent in your instructions for form 1040. So this kind of uh, dovetails into the discussion of who qualifies as a dependent because one of the major benefits of qualifying as a dependent 
could be the child uh, tax credit. So example, your child turns 17 on December 30th, 2022, and is a citizen of the United States and claimed as a dependent on your return. You cannot use the child, uh, child to claim the CTC child tax credit or ACTC additional child tax credit because the child was not under age 17 at the end of 2022. For each qualifying child, uh, for whom you are claiming the CTC or ACTC, you must check the quote child tax credit end quote box in column four of the dependents section on page one of form 1040. So that page one is where you're going to put basically your dependents. So you've got yourself, your social security numbers, everybody's information, all your personal information on page one of the form 1040. They want it right up front there, including the dependents. And then you check off if they qualify for the child tax credit, the actual calculation of the child tax credit being on the second page uh, of the form 1040, which we'll take a look at in the future with some examples. Adopted child. An adopted child is always treated as your own child. An adopted child includes a child lawfully placed with you for legal adoption. Credit for other dependents. This is the ODC. So remember the strategy here. We have a dependent. They qualify as a dependent possibly. Then the question is, well, are they qualifying for the child tax credit? If not, then other dependent credit. Much less, but still beneficial. <laughs> so the ODC is for individuals with a dependent who meets the following conditions. One, the person is claimed as a dependent on your return. So that goes into the instructions for being a dependent again. Uh, to determine if an individual is your dependent, begin with step one, under who qualifies as your dependent in the instructions for form 1040, which you could find on the IRS website. Two, the person cannot be used by you to claim the CTC or ACTC. So in other words, you have this dependent, you can't claim the CTC or ACTC, the child tax credit or just additional child tax credits, because if you could, you would do that because it would be more. So if you can't do that, then then that's one of the, th the restrictions because you're not being able to do that. That's why you're going to take the ODC other dependent credit. So see credits for qualifying children earlier for that one. Three, the person was a U.S. citizen, U.S. national, or U.S. resident alien. For more information, see publication 519. If the person is your adopted child, see adopted child later. Example two, your siblings. 10-year-old child B lives in Mexico and qualifies as your dependent. B is not a U.S. citizen, U.S. national, or U.S. resident alien. You cannot use B to claim the ODC other dependent credit. For each dependent for whom you are claiming the ODC other dependent credit, you must check the quote credit for other dependents end quote box in column four of the dependents section on page one of form 1040 or form 1040 SR for the dependent. In other words, you have your dependent, all the stuff on page one. You've got yourself, all your personal information, your social security number, your spouse's social security number and their name, all of your children's social security and numbers and names are on uh, page one, two, which would be your dependents. And then all your dependents would be, would be there as well. And then you would check next to your dependents name if they qualify for the child tax credit or the other dependent credit. You can't check both of them because they can't qualify for both. They can only qualify for one or the other. That's why we had one of those restrictions here for the other dependent credit being that they don't qualify for the child tax credit or additional child tax credit. And then on page two, you calculate the credit of course. So adopted child, we'll see examples of that later, by the way. Adopted child. An adopted child is always treated as your own child. An adopted child includes a child lawfully placed with you for legal adoption. Uh, if you are a U.S. citizen or U.S. national and your adopted child lived with you all year as a member of your household in 2022, that, me that child meets condition three earlier to be a qualified person for the ODC other dependent credit. So limits on the CTC and ODC child tax credit and other dependent credit. So the maximum credit amount of your CTC child tax credit and ODC other dependent credits may be reduced if your one or two apply, either one or two apply. Number one, the amount on line 18 of form 1040, 1040SR or 1040NR is less than both credits. 
So if the amount is zero, you cannot take either credit because there's no tax to reduce. But you may be able to take the ACTC if you are claiming the CTC, so the additional child tax credit, if you're claiming the child tax credit, if you cannot take the ACTC if you're only claiming the ODC. In other words, okay, so C part 2A additional child tax credit for all filers later. So this has to do uh, with the refundable and non-refundable portions of it. So remember, the idea is that this is an income tax. Normally, you can't get credits that take your liability below zero. But the refundable portion, which is termed as the ACTC, you may be able to get that, which mean, means it's more of like a benefit type of program, but you cannot apply the ACTC to an ODC, which went below zero, meaning the other dependent credit doesn't qualify for that refundable portion. So one more time, the amount on line 18 of your form 1040 or 1040 SR or 1040 NR is less than both credits. So uh, if the amount is zero, you cannot take either credit because there's no tax to reduce. So you don't have any taxes. You already don't have any taxes. You don't get to go below zero, but maybe you do. But you may be able to take the ACTC, additional child tax credit, the refundable side of things, if you are claiming the CTC, the child tax credit. So you were gonna take the child tax credit, but you couldn't because your liability in essence went below zero. So you can't take it, but you might be able to get the ACTC. But what if they were an other dependent, not a child tax credit, but other dependent, you cannot take the ACTC if you are only claiming the ODC, the other dependent credit. You don't get that refundable portion is my interpretation. So, so you can see part uh, 2A, additional child tax credit for all filers later. Two, uh, your modified adjusted gross income, the AGI is more than the amount shown below for your filing status. Married filing jointly, 400,000, pretty high threshold. All other filing statuses, 200,000. Pretty high threshold.